Hello and welcome once again to another act of worship from the Rosendale Methodist Circuit. Uh, we're going to begin our worship uh, this week with the words of Psalm 146. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God all my life long. Do not put your trust in princes, in mortals, in whom there is no help. When their breath departs, they return to the earth. On that very day, their plans perish. Happy are those whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord, their God, who made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, who keeps faith forever, who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the strangers. He upholds the orphan and the widow. But the way of the wicked he brings to ruin. The Lord will reign forever. Your God, O Zion, for all generations. Praise the Lord. So praise the Lord indeed. And you can echo the words of that psalm if you like by singing the hymn tell out my soul the greatness of the Lord what a wonderful hymn that is too and then something rather different which is <coughs> a hymn that's or a song rather my soul cries out with a joyful shout uh, somewhere the Goshen College Chamber Choir um, so if you like uh, Iona style music then that's the one for you we come to God in our prayers so let's pray lord we praise you your awesome presence fills the universe and your grace filled touch transforms our days we thank you for your guidance when the way is unsure and for your holy spirit who fills us with the strength that we need to follow you our praises ring out we cannot keep them in and as we worship your fire burns within us you have blessed us beyond our imaginings and we bring the worship of our whole lives to your throne of grace. Receive our praises, accept our thanksgiving for all your goodness, and, and, and enable us to go on singing your praises every day of our lives. Father, you made us to be one in Jesus, that we might be a family. With no boundaries between us, but forgive us, we pray, when we build barriers instead of bridges, when we set boundaries defining who is in and who is out, when we reject others instead of welcoming them. Forgive our selfishness and our reluctance to show your grace in action. Forgive our quickness to judge people and how hard we find it in our hearts to forgive others. Come Lord Jesus, come, cleanse, renew and reclaim us and set our hearts ablaze once more with your love. For we ask it in Jesus' name. The Lord hears our prayer and forgives our sin. Thanks be to God. Amen. And the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever amen following on from those prayers there's a song that you might like to check out on on youtube which is called we seek your kingdom uh, although there's no lyrics on the video the the song's easy to follow and the words are very clear um, perhaps your taste is for a traditional hymn, um, more traditional. For this purpose Christ was, was revealed, which leads us very nicely into our reading uh, from Mark chapter 7 and verse, uh, begin to read at verse 24. As you remember from last week, I'm sure, we, uh, <coughs> we were in uh, Mark chapter 7 already. And Jesus was teaching the crowd about the hypocrisy of the Pharisees or some of the Pharisees at least 
and uh, how they were rejecting the traditions, uh, sorry, rejecting the commands of God to fulfill their traditions. And Jesus teaching, teaching the disciples, teaching the crowd and teaching the disciples about what comes out of us, as in through from our hearts and minds, the words we speak, our actions, it all comes from within us. Those are the things that make us unacceptable to God, unclean, uh, not what goes in, not the food we eat, for example. So there's a change of scene now. Jesus leaves that place where he was and uh, heads north. So from there, Jesus set out and went away to the region of Tyre. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know he was there. Yet he could not escape notice. But a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit immediately heard about him and she came and bowed down at his feet. Now the woman was a Gentile of Syro-Phoenician origin. She begged him to cast the demon out of her daughter, and he said to her, Let the children be fed first, for it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. But she answered him, Sir, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Then he said to her, For saying that, you may go. The demon has left your daughter. So she went home, found the child lying on the bed, and the demon gone. Then he returned from the region of Tyre, and went by way of Sidon towards the Sea of Galilee, in the region of the Decapolis. They brought to him a deaf man who had an impediment in his speech, and they begged him to lay his hand on him. He took him aside in private, away from the crowd and put fingers into his ears, and he spat and touched his tongue. Then, he lo then, looking up to heaven, he sighed, and said to him, Ephatha, that is, be opened. And immediately his ears were opened, his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. And then Jesus ordered them to tell no one. But the more he ordered them, the more zealously, they proclaimed it. They were astounded beyond measure, saying, He has done everything well. He even makes the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. Amen. Jesus was in Gentile territory. Now, just in case uh, you're wondering why the Gentile is, the Gentile is, well, it's me, uh, people who are not Jewish. Uh, and Jesus had travelled a fair distance in order to find a place where he might be anonymous, where people wouldn't know he was there, keeping his presence a secret. And the towns of Tyre and Sidon are north of Israel on the, Medi <coughs> excuse me, on the Mediterranean coast. And these towns were proud, wealthy, Canaanite towns, where, and, uh, and did very well, thank you, with the trade from the Mediterranean. When Jesus moved on from there and went back across the River Jordan, he entered the area which is known as the Decapolis, which simply means ten cities. Uh, it was ten Greek cities, if you like, uh, to the east of the River Jordan, where, you know, where people were traditionally hostile uh, to the Jewish people. So it's safe to say that in these two stories, that Jesus was certainly not amongst his own people, and was likely to, to come across a little bit of uh, trouble at times, possibly. So let's just go back to the story of the Syrophoenician woman. As we said, she was a Gentile. And this story presents us with quite a challenge. Because it seems to paint a different picture of Jesus to, to the one that we're used to. You know, when we read the rest of the New Testament, we find the welcoming Jesus, the compassionate Jesus, the Jesus who is always, always ready, always ready to reach out and welcome those who need him to, to reach out to people who are in need but here we have a Jesus who who seems to set us he has boundaries to his work you know he tells us that there is these you know he's come first to the children of Israel and, and worse still we have a, a Jesus who appears to call a foreign woman a dog who calls all Gentiles dogs we need to look below the surface of this because that that challenge does not compute with the rest of the picture of Jesus. So this Gentile woman of Syrophoenician origin actively sought out Jesus to ask for help. 
Her daughter was possessed of an unclean spirit. And she really must have been, wasn't she, at her wit's end. To dare to approach a Jew of Jesus' fame was quite a courageous act. But she was determined, determined to get to him. Such is the power of love. And when, the love of her daughter, and when she, she got to him, I wonder if she pushed past the, the doorkeeper or whoever's house it was, past the host, and into that door, into that room where Jesus was. When she got to him, she bowed down before him. She was respectful. And she begged him, she begged him to cast this demon out of her daughter. And this is Jesus' response, this difficult response. Let the children be fed first, for it's not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. Well, what did he mean? When he refers to the children, let the children be fed first, while well, the children are the children of Israel, <coughs> God's chosen people. And Jesus' mission was to them first. After his crucifixion and resurrection, things will be very different. You know, if you remember the story in Acts chapter 10 of, of Peter being called to go to uh, Cornelius' house and the mission to the Gentiles really got underway. But Jesus' mission was first to the Jews, who had been called by God to share his love with others. But first, Jesus' people must be given the opportunity to hear what God was saying to them through, uh, through Jesus. The woman, a Gentile, must wait. Or well, so at first we are led to believe. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Now to call people dogs was an insult. And to us that sounds very harsh. It was uh, a saying that was well known to people of the day apparently. But calling this woman and by in, inference other Jewish people, other Gentile people, dogs. This was probably what Jesus' hosts and disciples would have expected Jesus to say, especially as he really didn't want anyone to know he was stay, staying there, staying there. So, is this why Jesus said it? Because he wanted to reflect the views of his listeners back to them? They didn't want this woman there. He wanted to make it clear that he knew how they were thinking. That must have been quite something. Sometimes maybe it's <clears throat> a good idea just to emphasize something to show people, hey, hang on a minute, you shouldn't really be thinking that. This is what you're thinking, isn't it? They probably wanted him to reject this woman because their first reaction like ours was to send her on away it tells us that in Matthew's account of this story. She was, at best, an unwelcome interruption. And at worst, she was someone who wasn't one of their people. You know, prejudice is nothing new, of course. I mean, how often do we hear people say that charity, charity begins at home? And they use that as an excuse to turn away those who are different. To turn away those who come from another place. To turn away refugees and asylum seekers. And I, it's, it's not, is it? It's not a case of charity begins at home. It's a case of both and. You know, a rich nation and rich people. People who have plenty should be making sure that their own people are well fed. And people who are desperate from overseas, they too should be able to find a home and a welcome. Jesus reminded his listeners and he reminds us that too often we think this way as I said everyone knew the phrase about Gentile dogs but I wonder how Jesus actually said it when we see things written down we have no idea about the intonation of someone's voice what was the tone of his voice and what non-verbals was was Jesus giving did Jesus say this phrase in such a way as to as to show that he didn't believe it to be true you know, when someone winds us up or someone teases us, someone we're fond of, someone we care about, we might suddenly come out with, oh, you rat bag or something. But they know we don't mean that because of the way we say it. Perhaps Jesus, you know, did Jesus in a way feed the woman his line so that she could come back at him with her punchline? 
Jesus kind of set the whole thing up, as it were. You know, did Jesus have a twinkle in his eye and a smile on his lips that only she could see? To give her the opportunity to show her wisdom and to show her faith, of course. I think she may well have done. She certainly responded very quickly and very effectively. Sir, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. And these were household pets, household dogs, not the wild dogs that you sometimes see wandering around in the Middle East. Now we all know that children can be messy eaters. I often found myself in the past on my hands and knees picking up the crumbs under the table when our boys, <coughs> when our boys were in their high chairs uh, and beyond as well. Now of course it's not necessary uh, as anything that hits the floor belongs to the dogs, to the pet dogs, and our meal isn't interrupted by me having to grovel on the floor. And the woman was happy with the leftovers because she knew that even God's leftovers are full of power and Jesus' mission to the children of Israel didn't need, to be didn't need to be interrupted for very long. Jesus only had to say the word. This woman had faith. As a Gentile, she knew that she didn't have any claim on the God of Israel, but she knew also that God's love is so deep and wide and high that there was hope even for a Gentile. And she was right. Because Jesus said to her, didn't he? For saying that, you may go. The demon has left your daughter. And she went home and she found the child lying on the bed and the demon gone. I wonder if Jesus' disciples suddenly got very embarrassed. Embarrassed at their prejudice as it was sort of brought out into the open by this conversation of Jesus and this incredible woman. They realised what Jesus had done. He mirrored back to them, as it were, the boundaries that they were setting. Because he had praised this woman and shown that in his kingdom there are no boundaries. You know, this story spoke very powerfully to the early Jewish Christians of God's love for all people. And the story that follows of the healing of the man who was deaf and had a speech impediment, and who also lived in a Gentile area in the ten cities of the Decapolis, you know, showed the early church what it should be busy doing. The church's calling was to go out into the world, to preach the good news of Jesus Christ, to heal, to make disciples. And a person's nationality, the colour of their skin, their language, their culture, their gender, their wealth, their position in society should make absolutely no difference. Everyone, everyone needed to hear about the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. All are equal before God and in Christ there are no boundaries. As we welcome Afghan refugees and other asylum seekers into our country, we do well to remember Jesus' example of reaching out to all who are in need. And we thank God, we thank God that Jesus was willing to minister to and to heal those who were not Jews and that he died on the cross not just for his own people but for the whole of humanity, for God's soul of the world, that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the son into the world to condemn the world but in order that the world might be saved through him. Once again, God's word reminds us of the unlimited love and the mercy of God. God's love reaches out to us who are not worthy to even gather the crumbs under his table, as we've often said in the communion service. Unconditional, unlimited love. With God, there are no boundaries, which means that this should also be true of his people, the church. The church, the people of the risen Lord Jesus Christ, has a wonderful calling to love as God loves, to show mercy as God shows mercy, to offer the healing and the sustaining power of Christ to the world, and in so doing, <clears throat> to show in word and deed that with God in his kingdom, there are no boundaries. And, by the way, to do it cheerfully with a sense of humour. Amen. Another two hymns to choose from. Uh, one is darkness, darkness like a shroud covers the earth. And the other one is one of my favourites. I think we've chosen it several times before. Oh love that wilt not let me go. 
and that leads us nicely into our prayers of intercession. So let us pray. Father, open our minds that we may see your world as you see it and grasp again the amazing plan that we should be one people. Set nations and their leaders free from selfish boundaries that we may, by grace, reach out with the love of Jesus. Father, fill us with your love and make us channels of your peace. Father, open our eyes to see your creation anew. Help us to see your fingerprints in every part of your world. Release the nations from their greed as they plunder the earth and destroy creation. Help us to understand the damage we cause by our unwillingness to live more sparingly. Father, fill us with your love and make us channels of your peace. Father, open our ears to the voice that speaks of all your creatures and teach us to value every man, woman and child as you do. Challenge the nations that keep hold of too much of the earth's riches that we may all hear and respond to the cries of the poor. Father, fill us with your love <coughs> and make us ch channels of your peace. Father, open our hands that all who are in desperate need may be welcomed, helped and found a safe and secure home. We pray, we continue to pray for the people of Afghanistan. For the work of refugee action, the UNHCR, the Refugee Council and all those churches which are in cities and towns receiving refugees. And we pray too for Ethiopia as war brings famine and as fires continue to rage and floods keep on rising. We pray for the people of Haiti, the United States and Spain. Father, fill us with your love and make us channels of your peace. Father, open our hearts to recognise and know your presence. Flood our lives with your joy and free us from any sense of duty or drudgery in serving you. May the sheer wonder and the privilege of being your children lift any burden we feel. Father, fill us with your love and make us channels of your peace. And Father, <coughs> open our lips to offer you the worship of hearts set on fire with your love and open our lives to the power of your Holy Spirit to transform who we are so that our lives may speak to all of our love of you. For it is in the name of the risen Lord Jesus Christ <coughs> that we pray. Amen. Amen. And to finish with, and can it be that I should gain an interest in the Saviour's blood? Died he for me? Yes, he did. Hallelujah. <clears throat> and then a song um, by Vertical Worship called Faithful Now, which is about holding on to faith despite what we see going on around us. And so to the blessing. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and evermore. Amen. Amen. And may God bless you all during this coming week. Amen.